One of the typical first steps for on-demand HR members is to undertake a workplace relations review and structural implementation. And one of the first steps of this process is to assess which, if any, modern award or awards cover their employees. This is an essential step as the consequences of incorrect assumptions lead to underpayment claims as well as potential fines and penalties from the Fair Work Ombudsman. And today we're going to unpack some of the key considerations and common mistakes that businesses make when determining award coverage. The most important and overarching concept that you need to remember is that you do not get to choose your award, the award chooses you. And what we mean by this is that some businesses when looking at possible award coverage often look at the different wages, penalties, annualized salary provisions and so on and then try and pick which outcome is the most convenient to them. The challenge is that many of the classification and coverage clauses within the modern awards are somewhat vague and it's often the case that a seemingly viable argument can be formed one way or the other. Worse, there's no single authority that you can go to in order to get a final and binding decision regarding award coverage. Sure, you can reach out to the Fair Work Ombudsman for a view. However, experience tells us that these views cannot be relied upon in the future and can be overturned at a future date in the event of an underpayment claim. Even professional advisors such as HR consultants and lawyers can form differing views on award coverage. The fact is, there is little doubt that if your business was to form a view on award coverage, you could probably go out and find a professional advisor who's willing to support your view. So the question becomes, how does your business navigate through all of these shades of grey when it comes to award coverage? Well, like many things in life and business, our view is that your best efforts are to seek professional advice and spend your time considering the experience and the perspective that this professional advice is coming from. The fact is that simply by having a law degree does not give the experience that is gained from years on the ground assisting with award interpretation and coverage and defending these positions when challenged by the Fair Work Ombudsman and other external bodies when facing underpayment claims. So choose who you listen to wisely. The second area where businesses tend to get it wrong when it comes to award coverage is that there are generally two ways in which employees can be covered under a modern award. And this is either by classification or the primary tasks which form part of their role or alternatively by industry classification or the primary function of the employer. In fact, even if a particular type of an employee is specifically considered to be award free, such as an IT professional, may also be award covered depending on where they work. So to give you an example, an in-house IT professional technically may be award free. However, if the same IT professional worked for a specialist IT firm, for example, they may be covered by the Professional Employees Award 2010. So why is all of this so important for business? This really only applies to businesses that are trying to pay their employees the minimum amount under the award and doesn't apply to you if you're paying your employees well, right? Wrong. There is more to modern awards than simply setting out the minimum rates of pay. It covers all aspects relating to their employment, including maximum amount of hours before overtime applies, what penalties and allowances you're required to pay, and a whole raft of other considerations. This means that regardless of how much you are paying your employees, you should still take award coverage very very seriously. The problem that many businesses face is that the process is very challenging and time consuming to go through initially. And the reality is, if you do get it wrong, there's probably not going to be any immediate consequences and most likely you won't even get any complaints from your employees. The problems when they do occur generally occur well into the future. 
a Fair Work Ombudsman audit can be triggered on the receipt of a single underpayment complaint. Now consider the scenario that you've made a small mistake in your ward interpretation, resulting in an employee requiring you to back pay one hour of overtime per week, let's say costing you $50. But what if this mistake was discovered five years into the future? That's $13,000. But what if you had 50 employees that this applied to? All of a sudden, that's $650,000. So the point here is that small errors in award interpretation may compound themselves over time and result in the requirement for a significant back pay of entitlements without even taking into account potential fines from the Fair Work Ombudsman for breaching your award obligations. So ask yourself, is this a risk that your business can afford to take? Does your business currently have a HR or workplace relations issue? Are you unsure how to work through compliance issues but still achieve a good business outcome? Why not take advantage of On Demand HR's free 30 minute online consultation with an experienced HR consultant? At the end of the consultation, we will also provide you with a strategic action plan to resolve your current issues. To see the types of matters we can help you with and to schedule your consultation, please visit ondemandhr.com.au forward slash advice. We look forward to delivering certainty, confidence and clarity for your business in your HR and workplace relations affairs.